I think that uh, we should have the freedom to do what we want with our bodies. Uh, and after all, people modify their bodies uh, in the, cos you know, the beauty industry and so on. Um, people have a uh, you know, healthy penis cut off when they want to be a woman. If somebody wants to sell their organ to benefit somebody else, I think the only interesting issue is whether they're paid a fair price for it. Mm. I've actually invested quite a lot of money to look like Brad Pitt. How do you think it's going? <laughs> um, well, uh, let's uh, just say I don't think he's going to be out of a job many times soon. I see. All right. Well, I consider myself dissed. You've got a lot of interesting views on drugs and sport. Let's start there. And mm -hmm. one of the things you said is that performance enhancement isn't against the spirit of sport. In, f in fact, it is the spirit of sport. What do you mean by that? Well, ever since you know, people started competing in sport, they've been trying to improve their performance, not just through training, but by, by taking substances and trying to modify themselves. Uh, and for example, in cycling, ever since um, cycling, professional cycling began in the early 1900s, people were taking things like strychnine and cocaine, alcohol, uh, amphetamines. Um, uh, somebody once asked um, one Tour de France uh, winner you know, how, how often he'd use La Bomba, um, which was amphetamines, and he said only when absolutely necessary. And they said, well, how often precisely is that? And he said, most of the time. Isn't the Athenian ideal of the Olympics, though, that you improve performance through hard work, through noble effort and exertion? You could try to, to achieve that ideal, but my view is that, that humans um, aren't just like greyhounds or horses that, that we sort of flog on a race and we see which one's the sort of strongest. Humans make decisions, they decide how to train, and they also make decisions about how to change themselves. And the question for sport is, you know, what will be the limits of that change? It's up to us to decide what we want sport to be, and, and my view is it's it's a great shame that we, we run these races and then immediately after we, we take the winner off the podium because they've taken a drug that we've caught them taking that probably many other competitors are taking and the people who are just the smartest are the ones that win. How does this work in practice, for instance, if it was cycling or, or pistol shooting, does everybody get equal access to whatever drugs they think are well, going to help them? Take one example. So in cycling and, and many performance and endurance events, um, how much oxygen your body can carry is a, is a very big determinant. So what these cyclists do is they take uh, EPO, which is, a, which is a hormone that the body naturally produces to make more red blood cells and carry more oxygen. And um, there's, a, there's 50 different versions. China produces it, um, Russia produces it, and they take this illegally. And so sometimes you pick them up and sometimes you don't. Now, what you could easily do is give up testing for it and simply say, we will measure how many red blood cells you have in your blood, and if you've got over 50% of your blood's red blood cells, you're out. And if it's under, it doesn't matter how you got there, uh, then you can compete. 